Morning to you viewers, this is the Colonel speaking to you live from the Grange for British Imperial YouTube Broadcasting. Today something unusual from the Dominion Famous Authors series. Some of you may have heard of this. Look, here we are. I have the album. Lots of different people in this one, I can assure you. This particular record, I haven't got the complete set, I've only got a couple of the records. Um, this one is Sheila K. Smith reading from the George and the Crown, parts one and two. Uh, the classic series of Dominion Records, made at Luton, unbelievably viewers. Uh, this is catalogue number B3, here we go. They're not very well recorded as usual with Dominion Records. They were all sitting in the bar that evening in February. Now 20 minutes before 6 at opening time. Then he'd come over from Chelston to an auction of Tarly Neville and was on his way back disappointed because of high prices. Dan had just come back from Bachelor's Hall, over by the Dicker, where he knew where he had gone ostensibly to sell a thief, but really, as everyone knew, to court Bell Shackford. Now he was helping Christopher and his mother polish glasses in readiness for six o'clock. The three young sheepers were much of a middle size, but they were very different in face and colouring. Leonard and Daniel were both dark, but whereas the former had his mother's sharp nose and chin, the latter had the broad face, short nose and wide mouth of his Saxon father. Christopher was blue-eyed and flaxen, with a weaker version of Dan's blunt nose and a sulky and biting mouth. There was a shuffling, scurrying sound outside, followed by a rap on the door. Go see who that is, Dan, said Kitty. We aren't open yet. Dan unlocked the door and revealed an ancient shepherd in charge of some muddy sheep. Hello, Mr. Gadget. What brings you round at this time? He's gone six o'clock, Master Sheeper. Not for half an hour, called Kitty from the bar. Mr. Gadget consulted an elderly attorney. My watch says three o'clock, which means ten minutes past six, he affirmed. And my clock says half past five, which means half past five, said Kitty. The old man heaved a deep sigh. I've come all the way from Brakey Bottom, and there's a wonderful lot of mud on the road. This way, it were once on the road. Reckon it's all on my boots now. Poor old chap, said Tom. I can't see any harm in serving him. It's nearly opening time. Oh, no, Dad, it isn't, said Daniel. Besides, if it was, said Len, even if it was only two minutes to six, you'd be breaking the damn law just the same. The law of a fine thing, ain't it, Mr. Gaddy? The shepherd looked confused and weary. What was six o'clock and two o'clock and ten o'clock? I'm wonderful muddled. Dan felt sorry for him. Maybe we could let you have a cup of tea, since it's too early for beer, he suggested. Well, you go into the kitchen and make it, said his mother, since you're the only one who's doing nothing. This statement was open to challenge, but Dan accepted it good humouredly. I'm a fine handy one with the tea, ain't I, Mum? You come around to the kitchen door, Mr. Gadget, and I'll give you as good as ale. Right, on to side two, viewers. I hope you can hear this. It's uh, pretty faint, isn't it? Not very well recorded at all. Here we go, side two. In the kitchen, Dan made tea for old Mr. Gadget. He had none of the normal awkwardness and shame of a man making a tea. The special complications of his life had taught him to be handy at most things. He blew up the dying fire into a drawer, filled the kettle with fresh water, fetched tea from the caddy and a cup from the shelf, just as efficiently and a good deal more graciously than his mother would have done. Old Gadget watched him from the chair, where he sat stiffly as one unused to rest. You're a wonderful kind young chap, Master Sheeper, and someday if you'll come around to my house, I'll show you what I ain't shown nobody yet. And what may that be, asked Daniel. My teeth. Your teeth? Yes, you come around to my house, and I'll show you my teeth. But I didn't know as you had any, said Dan, with rather a cactus stare at the thin, receding old mouth. No, there ain't many of those. I don't go wearing them about the place, but I've a wonderful fine set of teeth. Got him at the hospital, asked Dan, as he set the tea on the table. Mr. 
Yes, it was deliberate shaking hands, emptied his cup into his saucer, and sucked a few mouthfuls before answering impressively, No, not I. I made them myself. Reckon that was smart of you. How did you do it? It's taken me nigh on ten years. They're sheep's feet, what I picked up on the hill, and rubbed them and filed them so they're a proper size. And I strung them on two wires, and I hitch them around two old stumps I've got. You never saw the light. Stan was properly impressed. Reckon you're a hen clever man, Mr. Gadget, and I bet you find them useful at supper time. Mr. Gadget looks superior. Oh, I never use them for eating. They ain't that kind of feet. And I don't say if I can write this big one. I wear them for the looks of things. And someday, I mean to have my likeness took for them in. But if you come around to my house, I'll show them to you. I'll come one day when I'm a bachelor. I'll be proud. Reckon it ain't everyone I'd show them to. But you've done me a kindness today, Marsh Peter, and it ain't the fun. I've often wished that my poor Ellen could see my teeth. For many of the time she said, if we could only get you fitted for a set of teeth, Master, maybe it's what put the notion into my head, and I'm long so sorry she didn't live to see what I'd done. How ever, they may have told her where she's gone. There's my dog barking. Reckon the ship's uneasy. I must be off, or I'll lose the moon before I get to bachelor. Thank you kindly for the tea, Master. Well... Well, I don't know about you viewers, but uh, shame and awkwardness of a man making a cup of tea. I don't know about that. I don't feel any shame or awkwardness, and I make tea quite frequently. Um, it's extraordinary. One can't get the staff, you know, viewers. <laughs> yes, but then I am strict temperance. Thank you, viewers, and goodbye. <laughs>